Section 4.6 is about factoring things called special products. Now, the first couple that show up, the perfect square trinomials where you can see that all right and through here, and then the heading down toward the bottom that you can see toward the bottom of the screen, factoring differences of squares, both of these are gonna be ones where you could do them the way that we were doing things in section 4.5 and everything would work out fine. It's just that if you can recognize that this is what you've got, like if you can say, oh, this is a difference of squares, then the factoring ends up being faster. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, the other half of this section is about if you have sums or differences of cubes, there are situations there where I guess if you don't have the formula at your disposal, then it gets a lot longer. Um, but we'll get there when we get there. So the first thing, perfect square trinomials. So this is going the opposite way. So if you took a binomial and squared it, either one with a plus in the middle or one with a minus in the middle, you get this sort of thing where you're gonna have squares on the ends and then either a plus two AB or a minus two AB. So just to have a couple of examples, if you square four X plus three, so you'd have four X plus three times another four X plus three. Then if you foil that out, right, there's the foil right there and then I combine the middle terms. So it's 16 X squared plus 24 X plus nine. Or if you have X minus two Y quantity squares, this one's got a minus in it and also it has two variables. But if you do that as a foil, which is basically what I did here and then combine the middle terms, you end up down here. So how do you tell that you would have a perfect square trinomial to begin with? because we're gonna be going the opposite direction, right? We're gonna have a thing that looks like this, and then the idea is that if you notice that it's a perfect square trinomial, then the factorization gets really quick. The thing that you look at is if you've got it written in uh, standard form, look at, I should turn this on, the first and last terms. Those are squares, right? 16x squared, you could say, oh, well, that's 4 squared times x squared, so that's 4x quantity squared. The 9 is 3 squared, right? And then same thing down here. That's a square, and that's a square. And that's how you would catch it. You go, oh, if there are squares on the ends, um, then does the middle term work, right? Um, and then if the middle term works out correctly, then you've got a perfect square trinomial, and you're going to get the factorization really fast. Um, the differences of squares... Um, this one is really easy to catch because it doesn't have um, what we usually think of as being the middle term. Like, look at this thing. It's just got two terms in it. And usually what they look like, so here I multiplied one out, 7x plus 3 times 7x minus 3, which the name for these, by the way, is conjugates. So how these are almost identical except one has a plus in the middle and the other one has a minus. That's the word for that is that those are conjugates of each other. Um, but when you have the two conjugates, when you foil it, the outer and inner products end up adding out, right? Minus 21x plus 21x, those are gonna add out. And you end up here. So this is usually really easy to spot because there's no middle term. And then if you look at the two terms that are there, you go, oh, that's a square and that's a square, right? So this one is relatively easy to spot. I think this is easier than the perfect square trinomials. Um, but that's what we are dealing with here. Um, and then here it is in the order that we're actually gonna do things. If you have um, a difference of squares, then when you factor it, you're gonna get the conjugates. So, all right, let's get to some examples here. So uh, this first one, x squared plus 24x plus 144, um, this is where, I mean, I guess because of the section that we're in, you would anticipate it, but you look at the ends and go, is that a square? Yep, right, it's x squared, so sure, right? Um, and then is the 144 a square? Yep, all right, square 12, you get 144. So that's also a square, right? So then what we've got here is x squared plus 24x plus 12 squared, right? And then the only thing you'd have to check is that is that middle term gonna be two times x times 12? Looks like it. Right, so x squared plus two times, I guess two times 12 times x would look a little more conventional. And then plus 12 squared. And so this fits exactly with the formula up above. So then this would factor as x plus 12 times another x plus 12, or 
to write that in, I guess, a more compressed format, x plus 12 quantity squared. And, and there's the factorization. Um, so here I did it with the formula. That's honestly not the way that I really think about it. I mean, I look for the squares on the end, but then I just try it and see if it multiplies out correctly. So what I would do, like if just doing it like in my brain, so to speak, and I'll do this in a different color, um, I would go, all right, got an x squared, got a 12 squared. So let's see if I just multiply out x plus 12 times x plus 12, do I get the right thing, right? Do I get what I started out with? Because if I do, then we've, we've got the factorization, right? And then if you foil this out, you get x squared plus 12x plus another 12x plus 144. And then you go, okay, I'm supposed to have a 24x in the middle. I've got it, right? If I add those together, that's what it's going to be. So then it is x plus 12 times x plus 12 or x plus 12 quantity squared. Okay, then for the next one, this is a little more elaborate because the square that's right here, it's got a couple of things being squared, right? Because really that's two squared times p squared or two p quantity squared. Certainly that's a square, right? That's five squared. Um, and then this is one where I would just try it out and see if it works, right? So I would say, okay, there's a plus in the middle. So let's see, if I have 2p plus 5 times another 2p plus 5, is this going to work? Let's see, if we foil that, we're going to get 4p squared plus 10p for the outer plus 10p for the inner plus 25. And you go, is this what we're supposed to get? Yep, we're supposed to get 20. Looks like we're getting it. So then it looks like our answer would be 2p plus 5 quantity squared. All right, then number three, if there's, I guess, anything that's noticeable right away, one thing is that it's got a minus in it, right? Minus 90 AB. And then there's a second variable. The second variable won't cause too much of a mess though. Um, so the 25 A squared, um, just like with the four P squared up there, you go, okay, 25 is five squared. So five A quantity squared would give you the 25a squared. And then down here, 81 is also a square, right? It's nine squared. So 9b quantity squared will give you the 81, um, 81 squared, Ugh. or 81b squared. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so then try it out. Um, I'm going to put a minus. So when I check to make sure I'm getting the right middle term, um, I'm going to put minuses in here because there's a minus going along with that middle term. So 5a minus 9b times another 5a minus 9b. Let's see what we get. So 25a squared, right? 5 times 5, a times a. Then minus 45ab for the 5a times minus 9b in the outer. Same thing in the inner, another minus 45ab. And then for the last, you get a plus 81b squared. So then right here, yep, minus 90 AB, this is working out, right? So it looks like our answer is going to be 5A minus 9B quantity squared. Okay. Number four, this hasn't come up yet, but this is something we have to deal with sometimes. What if there's a common factor? You want to do that first. Um, there's, this one's kind of a red flag because you've got that negative leading term. So you think, well, at least I've got to factor a negative one out of this. But on top of that, it's like, well, if we're going to be factoring stuff out, can we factor anything else out besides just a negative one? And if you look at this, all of the coefficients are even, so we should be able to factor out a negative two, right? Nothing beyond that though, but we can factor out a negative two. So we should do that, right? Factor the negative two out and then negative two times x squared would give us the negative 2x squared. Then negative 2 times negative 14x would give us the positive 28x. And then negative 2 times 49 will give us negative 98. And then if you look at this, you go, okay, well, when the leading coefficient's a 1, I don't even use the um, perfect square trinomial formula. I just think, all right, pair of factors of 49 to add up to negative 14, that's negative seven and negative seven, right? And I think that's what most people do here, 
Um, the formula is nice when you have things like number two and number three are the leading coefficients, not a one. But here I think you can see it right away, just doing it the old way. There's nothing wrong with doing it the old way. Um, it'll still work. So I think you could jump right to that and then say, well, we can compress this a little and say it's negative two times x minus seven quantity squared. And that's our answer. All right. So now we've seen some perfect square trinomials. Now let's see some differences of squares. So these, like if they're thrown in with a bunch of other stuff, like instead of having everything like segmented out where it's like first we have leading coefficients of one, then we have leading coefficients that aren't one, then we have this, then we have that. Um, if everything was jumbled together where it was just like factor these polynomials and it was just all kinds of different ones, these would be easy to catch because they've got two terms, right? Because that's the, the thing that you notice where you go, it's only got two terms. I should check and see if this is a difference of squares, right? Um, this one, I think we're there right away, right? Because um, you can go, yeah, 100, that's 10 squared. And you can also look at this as that you would need a pair of factors of negative 100 to add to zero, right? Like if you're going to do it the old way, and that would work, right? Because then you'd say, well, plus 10 minus 10, right? But we do have two squares here, right? Because that's a square and the 100 is a square. So yeah, you, you could then say, well, this is x squared minus 10 squared, which then would factor as x plus 10 times x minus 10, right? And that is the answer. Um, or here, right, nine and 16 are perfect squares. So the nine p squared, that's three p quantity squared. And then the 16 q squared, that's four q quantity squared. So then you could say, well, this is three p quantity squared minus four q quantity squared which then you could factor into the conjugates of 3p plus 4q and then 3p minus 4q. All right. Um, next, number seven. Those are still squares, even though we got some big exponents here. Because if you think about that one property of exponents where you have a power raised to another power and you can multiply them together, that y to the 10th, you could write like this, is y to the fifth squared, right? So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to write this as some quantity getting squared because we're trying to see if we got a difference of squares here, right? But if I write it this way, then, you know, this is a square, right? And then this one, we can kind of do a similar thing. You could say, well, this is 2z squared squared, right? Because 2 squared will give you the 4. And z squared squared, you can multiply the exponents. 2 times 2 is 4, right? So then you've got y to the 5th squared minus 2z squared quantity squared. And you can factor it into conjugates. So y to the 5th plus 2z squared times y to the 5th minus 2z squared. And it looks like there we go. There's the answer. All right, next. Um, this looks kind of involved, but it has a common factor because even if you don't see anything else right away, if you just see the 10 and the 90, you go, wait a minute. Those are both divisible by 10. They end in zero. And then is there anything else? Well, there's an M here, there's an M to the third. So it looks like our GCF here would be 10M. We can factor that out of both terms. So we'd have 10M factored out and then 10M times M squared N to the fourth would give us this first term. And then times nine would give us that second one. But then if you look at what's inside the parentheses, that's a difference of squares. Right, because that thing right there, that's mn squared squared, right? Because m squared will give you the m squared, and then n squared squared will give you the n to the fourth. The nine is three squared. So we're still gonna have 10m out front, but then this will factor into conjugates. So mn squared plus three times mn squared minus three. 
And that would be our answer. And then number nine, this is a weird case because usually you think if there are four terms, then you should factor by grouping. But here you can't because um, you're going to end up, no matter how you pick your groups, one group where you can't do anything. If you do it the way it's set up right now, um, the 36 minus b squared, you can't factor anything out of that. That's actually a difference of squares, so you could factor it. But well, you couldn't factor a common factor out, and you need that to factor by grouping. But that's not actually what this is. Uh, because, watch this. This thing, I'm going to do this in a different color. But this part right here, the a squared plus 12a plus 36, that's a perfect square. Right? Got a square on this end, got a square on this end. And then if you wanted a pair of factors of 36 to add up to 12, it's 6 and 6. Right? So you could rewrite this thing as a plus 6 quantity squared minus b squared. And that's the idea. Because then you go, oh, it's a difference of squares now. Right? Even though the thing being squared has a couple of terms on it, it's still a thing getting squared minus another thing getting squared. So then this would factor into the conjugates. And the answer here is a plus 6 plus b times a plus 6 minus b. All right, that's what the conjugates would be. So this is actually the answer to this. So that's a little bit different because it sort of violates that idea of if it's four terms, look for factoring by grouping. I would still say look for that first, but then if you can't factor by grouping, then you want to think, well, maybe it's this weird case where it's a difference of squares that has a sum of squares in it. Or a difference of squares that has a perfect square trinomial in it. That's what I was trying to say. All right, so that is a possibility. That's kind of a weird case, but it comes up every once in a while. So worth bringing up. All right, now into sums and differences of cubes. Okay, so why does this work? Um, like the multiplication? Um, we're not going to do it in this direction. We'd be doing the factoring instead, right? We'd be going the other way. But the reason that this works is because notice the signs here, like how here there's a plus and here there's a minus. And then the same thing here, they alternate. There's a minus here and then a plus here. Because those signs are different, that makes all these middle terms add out, right? That's how you end up getting like a minus a squared b and then later a plus a squared b and that sort of thing. And eventually you just have a cubed plus b cubed for the first one, a cubed minus b cubed for the second. Um, we're gonna go the other way though. Um, where we're going to have either the sum of the two cubes or the difference of the two cubes and then to factor it. So how do you remember which is which? Um, the sign in between on the difference of cube or the sum or difference of cubes, so like right here, that matches with the one in the binomial, right? Same thing here, right? We've got a minus between the cubes. we got a minus in the binomial. And then it's got to be the opposite sign here because then otherwise all those middle terms don't cancel out. So if you got a minus here, you'd have to have a plus here. And so that's all I remember. Like all I remember about this is that um, whatever you've got in the binomial, um, like that's got to match what was in the original, like if it was a sum or difference of cubes. So plus here, you'd have a plus here, and then the sign's got to flip. Um, however, you only really need these formulas if, um, if you have a leading coefficient that's not 1. Because if it is 1, if, even if you forgot the formula, you could do it with long division, and you'd get it right. Um, and I've been there. So like with number 10, you could actually do that. Um, but this is a sum of cubes, right? A cubed obviously is a cube, but then 27 is 3 cubed. So you could say, well, then this is A cubed plus 3 cubed, and if we we're going to follow this formula right here, since this is a sum of cubes, it would be a plus 3 times a squared minus, I guess, a times 3, and then plus 3 squared if I'm following the formula to the letter. And then you could rewrite that with everything simplified in that trinomial. You'd have a plus 3 times a squared minus 3a plus 9. And that trinomial won't factor. Um, 
but that's what we're going to end up with, right? Because if you look at that thing, it's almost a perfect square trinomial, except um, you would need it two times the AB, and we don't have it, so this doesn't actually factor. Um, and usually they don't. But that's how you do it using the formula. Or what if you forgot the formula? Um, and I'm going to do this on a different color, maybe black. Um, like, let's say you know that there's a formula, but you're just drawing a blank. You don't remember it. What you could do is you could think about, like, what would make this polynomial here zero? Like, what value of a? Negative 3, right? Because negative 3 cubed is going to be negative 27, right? And then negative 27 plus 27 is zero. If you do it with long division, or which I'm actually going to do with synthetic division to save space, but... Let's see, so then a cubed plus 27, if you put that in for synthetic division, you have to put it in like this, right? Because we don't have an a squared term, we don't have an a term. But then you could do it this way, you could bring down the one, then negative three times one is negative three, add down and get negative three, negative three times negative three is nine, add down and get nine, and then negative 27 and then zero. So then that means that the quotient is going to be a squared minus 3a plus 9. That looks kind of familiar. So then that would tell you that a cubed plus 27 would be equal to a plus 3 times a squared minus 3a plus 9. And I'm getting the a plus 3 um, just because that would really be the um, divisor when you got the negative 3 out here. Right, because um, the negative three is essentially the root of what your divisor actually is, right? It's the thing that would make it zero. Um, but if you look at this factorization, it's identical to this one up here. So if you do forget the formula, that's how you can do it, at least if you've got a leading coefficient of one. Then the next one, I think the only difference is the next one's a difference of cubes. So, all right. That's y cubed minus 6 cubed. Well, that's what 216 is, it's 6 cubed. And if you use the formula, let's see, that's y minus 6, and then times y squared plus y times 6, which most people write as 6y, and then plus 6 squared, which is 36. So it's that. Um, or, I guess this one we can do the same thing, hypothetically, what happens if you forget the formula? Well, um, the thing that would make this polynomial zero, the value for y that would do that would be six. So then you could say, well, if we're gonna do the synthetic division, we get the six out there. And then we're gonna have one, zero, zero, negative 216. Because once again, there's no uh, y squared or y term, kind of like what happened up here. So we're gonna need coefficients of zero. And then synthetic division, bring down the one, 6 times 1 6. Add down, that's a 6. 6 times 6 is 36. And 6 times 36 is 216. So then that means that our quotient is going to be y squared plus 6y plus 36. Looks nice and familiar. So then y cubed minus 216 would have to be y minus 6. Since we've got that 6 there, that means the divisor must have been y minus 6, um, right? If you sub 6 in it to get 0, and then times y squared plus 6y plus 36. See? Same answer. So I figured that was worth going through because I've definitely forgotten these before, the, the formulas. So just in case that happens, there is a workaround, which is... If you do the synthetic division, you'll get the right thing. All right, except maybe for, um, let's see, I guess it's number 13 that's troublesome, so we'll get there in a minute. Because this one is not troublesome because there's a common factor. All right, if you look at this thing, you go, well, this isn't a sum of cubes because there are x squareds in it. But also, 8 and 64 are cubes right because 8 is 2 cubed 64 is 4 cubed but also they have a common factor of 8 and it's better to get the common factor out now I mean you could do it later and you could still get everything to work out properly but if you get it out now 
you have smaller numbers to deal with. So that's what I would do here. I would say, all right, our greatest common factor is going to be 8x squared. So then if we factor out the 8x squared, 8x squared times y cubed would give us the first term. 8x squared times 8 will give us the second. This looks doable, right? Because then you look at this thing, you go, all right, y cubed, 2 cubed. So 8x squared times y plus 2. And then for the other part, y squared minus y times 2, which is usually written as 2y, and then plus 2 squared, which is 4. And it looks like that is where we are going to end up. Um, and if you notice, like here, the y cubed plus 8, you could do that um, with long division, right? Because if you did, since I did it for the other ones, you know, you could say, well, then if you had like negative 2 and 1, 0, 0, 8, it'll work, right? So bring that down. 1, negative 2, negative 2, 4, 4, negative 8, 0. And you can see it right there, right? There's the y squared minus 2y plus 4. So sure, right? Um, 13, this one doesn't have a common factor. Um, although it also won't have a leading coefficient of 1. So 125 is 5 cubed, and then um, a squared cubed would give you the a to the sixth, right? So then this is actually 5a squared cubed, and then that one is going to be 4b cubed, Right, since 4 cubed would be 64, b cubed would be b cubed. Um, so I guess to write this more explicitly, we could say this is 5 cubed times a squared cubed minus 4 cubed times b cubed. Right, there's a lot going on there. Maybe it is better to write that that way first and then say, oh, well, then we could combine stuff and say this is 5a squared cubed minus 4b cubed, and it's a difference. So following the formula, and this is one where trying to do the synthetic division is actually really hard, um, but it would be a difference in the binomial. So 5a squared minus 4b. And then in the trinomial, so we're going to have, let's see, I guess it would be 5a squared squared plus 2 times 5a squared. Why am I putting the two in there? That doesn't go there. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm thinking about perfect squares. Shouldn't be thinking about that. So plus 5a squared times 4b. The important thing is that plus, right? It's got to be the opposite sign of what you got out there. And then plus 4b quantity squared. So we're going to have 5a squared minus 4b times, let's see, 5a squared quantity squared, 5 squared is 25, a squared squared is a to the fourth. Then that middle term would be 20a squared b, and the last one would be 16b squared. Um, kind of a long-winded answer, but that is the answer right there. Um, another thing with these is, especially when you have sums and differences of cubes, is that the answer, like the factored version, looks significantly less efficient. Like it's way bigger. Like horizontally, right, there's a lot more happening now than there is back here, right? Way more terms, right? And that tends to be what happens, um, is that uh, like an accordion, it stretches itself out when you factor it. At least if it's a sum or a difference of cubes, that's what happens. Um, all right, then 14 is kind of a red herring. Uh, because I wanted to get this in here. And if you look at this, you go, I see some cubes. There's an x cubed, there's a 27, but looks like there's a common factor, right? And so our greatest common factor, you go, oh, 3 and 27, those are both divisible by 3. But then we've got an x cubed and an x, so we could factor out an x, right? So we could say, well, this will be 3x times, we're left with an x squared in the first term, and then a 9 in the second. 
And that's the whole problem. We're done. Um, because x squared plus 9 does not factor, because that's the sum of squares. Right? So that thing right there, that does not factor. And that's because it's the sum of squares, not a difference of squares. Right, so I guess if we'd start off with 3x cubed minus 27x, then when we got here, we'd have an x squared minus 9, then that would factor, right? So, like, just for comparison's sake, you know, if we had 3x cubed um, minus 27x, then, yeah, you could say this will be 3x times x squared minus 9. And then you go, oh, look, difference of squares. This is 3x times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Yeah, sure, that's going to work. But the sum of squares... You just have to stop. There's nothing you can do. Um, so x squared plus 9, can't factor that. Just factoring out the 3x is all that we can actually do here.